the tropics trying to develop something out here off the east coast of Mindanao. In fact, take a look at latest GFS uh, model guidance here, kind of taking uh, guidance from ASCAD imagery as well. Low pressure area spinning up there just towards the southeast of Davao. Big issue is that you have that rainfall wrapping around the northern periphery of this, and it's going to be bringing plenty of precip across Mindanao, southern Visayas, and eventually, as we go ahead out towards Tuesday into Wednesday, towards the west of Pelawan here, uh, this is still going to be a low pressure area, less likely chance of a tropical depression at this time, but the big issue is that's there, and we'll have moisture flow coming in around it, and thus, from Manila, uh, specifically across the Cagayan Valley in northern Luzon, we could be looking at some pretty heavy rainfall. Remember, all of this is falling on top of already saturated grounds. Actually, this is taken overnight from our Sunday into Monday morning flood advisories and warnings from Pagasa. Be sure to check out the latest warnings, by the way, from the agency. They're doing a good job putting this stuff out. And I, I'm not one of those guys that like to knock, knock Pagasa. I know lately they have, they've really been trying to help people out and save lives here. So big props to them, by the way. Uh, LPA, TD possible tropical depression, but not likely, I do believe. But you know what is likely? Flooding across Mindanao, Southern Versailles here. Check with the latest warnings, as I mentioned, from Bagasa. This is still, by the way, the 18th of January, 2020. We'll get to this in just a second. The Patreons, thank you very much for everybody who's been donating. Check out the link below if you are curious about that. Uh, making these videos is time consuming, and I'm trying to get a new graphic package to speed things up here. Um, yeah, there's hopes, a lot of work, but um, hopefully we can help people out. All right, there's our shear line. We call it the tail end of cold front, uh, according to Pegasus. I don't really like to call it a cold front because cold front, um, different dynamics than this. The big issue here is you have those northerly winds kind of interacting with that southerly flow, and you can really see it clearly here on satellite imagery, but all eyes are on this way down here. There's that area of convection. Also, there's plenty of moisture with this too. Dry air north of it, by the way, across Okinawa, Japan, all of that dry air filtering towards the south. Well, down here into the tropics, we have just a surge of moisture, this pulse of energy. So like I said, even if this does not become a tropical depression, it has loads of moisture with it. And thus we see that chance of flooding. By the way, this graphic is uh, microwave imagery. You can find it at the University of Wisconsin's webpage. Conspiracy theorists love using this because they believe that it, it shows where governmental stuff is I, I'm not sure what they do with it. I guarantee if you check the comment section, there might be one person, at least one person saying, look, there it is. Goodness gracious. Monday. All right, here's our low pressure area by Monday evening, pushing into Mindanao. Like I said earlier, it's that moisture flow on the northern periphery of it. So more late day, you're still going to see that moisture wrapping around all the way back here towards the north as it tracks here on that westerly progression off towards the Sulu Sea. As we go ahead into Tuesday, still got that flow coming in behind it and thus increasing precipitation back towards the north. Pelawan as well, you're kind of in the mix here. This is what I'm talking about. See that flow coming in the northeastern Luzon as we go ahead into your Tuesday. Cagayan Valley already saturated. The river is already high. Maga Dam already near capacity at this time. So when you get that flow wrapping in, that's going to bring yet more rainfall in that area. And uh, the threat of flooding is high. In my humble opinion here, uh, because of the already saturated ground and that inflow, coming in by midweek. This is by Wednesday. Um, there's our low pressure area. Honestly, I don't think this is going to become a tropical depression. Too much shear. Definitely not by JMA. JMA is not going to name this. Bagasa, sometimes Bagasa, they get motivated and they, they name systems. It really depends on who's at the forecast desk at that time. But regardless, if it gets a name or not, it's all about the rainfall, that moisture inflow. I mean, red indicates 50 to 100 millimeters over the next five days, guys. Look at this. Eastern Mindanao, Visayas, Samoa, late day, all the way up through Luzon, the Sierra Madre Mountains. We'll zoom in right here. Look at this. This is upwards four to 500 millimeters indicated via the ECMWF model over the next five days. That is just a torrential amount of rain on the East Coast of the uh, mountains there. The good news, this is a relatively rural area. My worry is some of that makes its way further inland. We can start to see that heavy precipitation into the uh, valley here 
uh, where remember during Vicky and Ulysses, significant flooding across that area. I'll get out of the way. Let's take a look at this. All right, so this is looking at the extended forecast well into the weekend. Here's our system. There it is right there, spins up, kind of moves towards the west, moisture flow pulling towards the north. But watch this, a little trough comes through, hooks it, pulls it off towards Japan. This low in the Philippines could eventually impact Okinawa, might even bring snow to Tokyo. We'll talk more about that in a Whoop in later this week. How about that? But you know what it does bring across the Philippines? It could usher in a nice cold stretch with drier air heading into the weekend, next weekend, and next week. Long range. Um, when we're talking about long range forecasts, we don't just look at model guidance as well. Some YouTube forecasters might do that. I try to tie the pieces together and see what the trends are. If we get a trough coming through, picking this up, pulling it towards the northeast, well, we should get that dry air spilling in behind it you know what also would help me make these forecasts a little bit better if we got more some more patreons here but i can't thank you guys enough thank you curtis david carrie john chuck lisa john Reed, resty resty i'm still sorry if i'm pronouncing your name wrong there uh, super typhoons those guys helping getting this along here john ron adam jim david and rich thank you very much my goodness my goal, I'm still in talks with Metro Weather from New Zealand, is to get graphics like this. It's turnkey. It looks a lot better. That is the goal. If not, we got other options here, too. So um, just trying to upgrade this setup here to help you guys out and uh, help make this better. I mean, mo every dime I get from the Patreon, I'm putting back into the system here. I mean, I'm barely making any no profit, definitely, but enough money to kind of cover the expenses thus far on the graphics I'm using already. So just any help does, um, it goes a long way. So thank you very much for everybody's donated the Patreon there. Key thing though, stay safe out there. If you want to um, get more information, of course, check in with Vegasa on the storm system. They're doing a fantastic job there. Twitter, Facebook, you can follow me on Instagram, all that stuff. Of course, hit the like button and subscribe as well if you do find these videos useful. Stay safe out there as always, and thanks for watching.